We have two, two speakers for this afternoon, and both of those speakers will be speaking on the theme, Making a Judiciary Inquiry Commission and Grievance and Ethics Committee more responsive to current challenges and trends. One speaker, Councillor Joyce Reeves, by association, and the second speaker, former Associate Justice Gladys Johnson, will be speaking from the perspective of the Supreme Court of Liberia. JIC 
and the Appearance and Ethics Commission, GEC, more responsive to the current challenges and trends. The purpose of this paper is to provide pertinent information on issues affecting the rule of law and how citizens and judicial actors can collectively find a way forward in addressing them. It covers the roles and functions of these two commissions and how ordinary librarians can utilize the mechanisms in seeking redress whenever their rights are violated by a lawyer or a judge. It will focus on a perceived corruption within the practice of law, information dissemination, issues faced by civil litigants who cannot afford legal representation. The rule of law is built on the independence and efficient use of the law here towards an effective justice system, which is supposed to be free of corruption and interference from other government functionaries, i.e. the executive and legislative branches of government. It has to be seen as a branch of government that is impartial, which adheres to the rule of law and enables the citizens to have equal access and rights under the law. The public now sees the judiciary as being corrupt and is not responding to the norms and ills in the society in all aspects. To build trust and ensure public confidence, the Judiciary Inquiry Committee and the Previous and Actors Commission should be adequately funded by the Judiciary Branch of Government and considered independent entities. The Liberian National Bar Association has established by, was established by an act of the legislature on February 4th, 1907, which is the oldest bar association in Africa. The vision of the LMBA is to show that there exists an independent, ethical, and improved judiciary and legal education system in which access so justice is effectively managed and that all Liberians benefit. The Liberian National Bar, through its constitution, established a grievance and ethics committee, which has the exclusive authority to investigate the moral and ethical conduct of lawyers. The judiciary also has a grievance and ethics committee, which also investigates and reviews the moral and ethical conduct of lawyers which we believe usurps the function of the LMB and reduces its control over its members, meaning lawyers. In order to proceed, I would like to define what is JIC or Judiciary Inquiry Commission. And the GEC, Grievance and Ethical Committee, they are what and what their functions are and roles within the judiciary. As it stands, the Chief Justice of the Republic of Liberia is vested with the authority to appoint members of these committees. He appoints members of these committees as chairpersons and members respectively, with the Chairman of the Grievance and Ethics Committee serving as the Secretary of the Judicial Inquiry Commission. In compliance with the Judicial Canon 40, which stipulates as follows, and I quote, in associate justice, two judges of court of records, the president of the Liberian National Bar Association, and the chairman of the Grievance and Ethics Commission of the Supreme Court shall constitute a judiciary inquiry commission with the exclusive power and authority to receive and investigate complaints against judges of courts of records and non records in the Republic of Europe for violation of any provision of the judicial canons. The Chief Justice shall appoint members of the Commission, and the Associate Justice shall be Chairman of the Commission, and the Chairman of the Previous and Ethical Committee to serve as Secretary of the Commission. The Chief Justice and two Associate Justices appointed by the Chief Justice. 
shall constitute a commission whenever the associate justice of the Supreme Court is involved. Unquote. The Chichisa Inquiry Commission has a school manner to receive and investigate complaints against masters, judges, and justices who breach the judicial canons through the office of the Chief Justice. It, it is to have an independent, fair, and impartial hearing to investigate and make recommendations to the Chief Justice for possible enforcement. The judicial canons are rules that get, governs the conduct of all officers of the judiciary. It is vital to our justice system. The Liberian legal system is based on the principles of independence, impar independent, as an independent, impartial, and competent judiciary composed of men and women of integrity who are responsible to apply the laws of the land without fear of freedom. It plays an essential role by preserving the principles of justice and the role of law. Judges, individually and collectively, are respected and honored with in who enjoy public trust and must make every effort to maintain and enhance confidence in the legal system. They should maintain the dignity of their judicial offices at all times and avoid impropriety in their professional and personal lives. They should aspire to conduct and guarantee the greatest possible public confidence in their transaction. The Premiers and Ethics Committee. The Premiers and Ethics Committee is also an auxiliary acceptance within the Judiciary Bank of the Liberian government with a mandate to receive and investigate complaints against lawyers who violate the code of moral and professional ethics governing their conduct. It is proposed to receive, investigate, find facts, and make recommendations to the Chief Justice based on facts and findings of its investigation relative to the unethical conduct of lawyers. The Code of Moral and Professional Ethics governs the conduct of all lawyers practicing law in Liberia. It is essential to our legal system because lawyers are members of the legal profession and representatives or their clients. Office, officers of the legal system and public citizen has special responsibility in the quality of justice. They perform advice functions such as advising clients and seriously exciting the client's position under the rules of the adversary system. Professionally, lawyers should be competent, prompt, and diligent. The professional responsibilities of lawyers are prescribed in a court of moral and professional conduct, as well as substantive and procedural laws. However, lawyers should also be guided by personal conscience and the approbation of professional peers. A lawyer should strive to achieve the highest levels of skills, improve the law, the legal profession, and exemplify the legal professional's ideas of public service. In practice, however, conflicting responsibilities are encountered. These ethical problems arise from conflict between lawyers' responsibility to clients, the legal system, and lawyers' interests in remaining ethical while it is attaining a satisfactory level. While writing this paper, I made a research at the Temple of Justice, and I went to the office of the JIC because I wanted to find out what terms of reference the JIC has and what term of reference the Grievance and Ethics Committee has. What I was able to gather for the JIC was what I've read from to you from Article 40 of the Canons, can afford it. And I went to the Premier's Ethics Office and I asked what 
was the term of reference. What did they have? And what was given to me was the bylaws and constitutions of the Liberian National Bar Association. <laughs> that is to say, the JIC and the GEC have no term of reference. They have no rules and guidelines by which they are implementing. How the police are brought, how they are handled, what times they are given to opinions to come, and other procedures. Based on that, and looking at what has happened in my investigation after reading, going to the American Bar Association, going to the Ghana Bar Association, going to the Sierra Leone Bar Association, and going to the Nigerian Bar Association, I was able to see that they have procedures, they have guidelines, and they have term of reference. So in my recommendations, I have made that we should have term of reference, we should have procedures by which these commissions can be effective and efficient. In the rules of the Liberian National Bar, it says the previous entry committee cannot take money or property from lawyer in return to the clients, cannot sue the lawyer on behalf of the clients, cannot do the legal work that the lawyer failed to do, cannot change the fee the lawyer charged even if it was too high, cannot represent the complainant or give legal advice, and cannot hand down a ruling that a lawyer is guilty or not guilty. For the JIC, the JIC cannot revise the ruling of a judge. It only affects the ethical base corner of the judge. The JIC cannot serve as a put. These are the do's and don'ts of the JIC and the GEC. The complainant process. A client has the right to file a complaint against his or her lawyer or judge who in the mind of the client has compromised or handled his or her case unprofessionally. These complaints are channeled to the office of the Chief Justice to be submitted to the chairperson of the JIC and to the GSC. Relatively, a flu lawyer has the right to file a complaint against the unethical conduct of another lawyer to the previous and ethics committee through the office of the Chief Justice as stipulated in Rule 40. A lawyer tutored to his brother lawyer of the Court of Moral Ethics, the complainant should submit a clear and concise statement alleging the alleged misconduct of his or her fellow lawyer, showing documentary evidence that supports the allegation to include the names and addresses of any witness who support the allegation. Lawyers as officers of the court should act fast in reporting acts of misconduct of their fellow lawyers in their compliance with Rule 29, upholding the honor of the profession of the court of moral and professional ethics. The complete process relative to the ethical conduct against justice, magistrates, and lawyers should be strengthened with the public being encouraged to report cases without any form of apprehension. I decided to take a comment from a lawyer from Sierra Leone. And in his statement, he said, and I quote, successful governments exploited the menace and use of the bar to control dissenting opinions. Why is the opposition use the bar as an abusive mechanism to undermine government Either way, the bar laws in independence, professionalism, integrity, and esteem in the eyes of the public. He also said, What is the way forward? One may ask. The legal profession cannot continue to operate in a political a garden. Something has to give. In deciding what areas need to change, key principles come to mind. One, and foremost, promotion, promoting ethics, integrity, and commitment to affordable justice for all. In this regard, continuing legal education could play a vital role. What this means is that compulsory attendance 
of legal training session in the course of a year must be prerequisite for a council to obtain annual practicing certificate. Secondly, the practice of law should facilitate innovation, efficiency, and competition, including a dramatic impact that technology is playing and will continue to play in the practice of law. Generally, innovation, efficiency, and tenants technology tend to drive down the cost of service and enhance the quality of practice. Lack of innovation, efficiency, technology, and competition creates the environment where the profession appears to be served in its own interest while in significant ways neglecting the needs and wants of the clients. Finally, the legal profession cannot ignore many of the realities of life as affecting the society, including but not limited to the ever-increasing internal influence by other branches of government as well as the judiciary. These forces appear to be gaining greater trade traction as we move into the second decade of the 21st century and they will exert even greater influence on the legal profession in the coming years. The bar must maintain its independence, refrain and resist toxic overture and pressures of party politics. My recommendations to the Honorable Supreme Court and to this conference are for the benefits of the petition, and we, we the bar make the following recommendations that the Judicial Required Commission be chaired by a retired Chief Justice or a retired Associate Justice to ensure independence. That the functions of the previous and ethics committee be turned entirely over to the Liberian National Bar since lawyers make up the LMBA. That there be more public awareness of the roles and functions of the Judicial Required Commission and the previous ethics committee to avoid the public and to afford the public opportunity to express their dissatisfaction and grievances. The guidelines for receiving complaints to these commissions be submitted to the respective secretariat. And we see it should not be submitted to the Chief Justice Office of the Chief Justice, but each commission should have a secretariat, and that secretariat must receive the complaint. Take it to the chairman instead of it going to the chief justice because we'll be overburdening him. Since, in fact, and indeed, the recommendation comes back to the chief justice and the Supreme Court for enforcement and implementation. That the previous ethics commission be authorized to adopt its procedures for investigating complaints against lawyers. And there is an urgent need for the revision of such portions of the judicial canon, especially canon 40. Because the Judicial Commission now has laid in surveillance as members, and a canon 40 has not been revised. So we ask that it be revised, and that the Code of Moral Ethics also be revised. The proclaim against judges or lawyers who are in cases undetermined should not be investigated by the JIC or the GEC since the case is still sub to GC. Mm -hmm. I thank you. The one I just read? Number seven. against judges or lawyers who are in cases undetermined should not be investigated by the JIC or the GEC send the case is still subject to That means to say the case has not been determined, it can be influenced by whatever recommendations or whatever is said by the JIC or the GEC. Okay, that was the first presenter. Thank you, and we use this time to now call on her honor. She was once an honor, and then she still deserves being called her honor. Justice, common associate justice of the Supreme Court, her honor, Radish 
Mike Johnson to now come to present the same topic on from the perspectives of the Supreme Court Bar and Supreme Court. Justin Johnson.
Sheriff Bailiff, all members of the judiciary parliament, and other government officials here present. I greet you. My greetings also to the president and members of the bar, law students, government officials here to grace this occasion, fellow citizens, one and all. I must first of all thank the organizing committee chaired by her honor, Sierra A. G. U, for affording me the opportunity to contribute to this worthy cause. My assigned role as I understand it in the judicial conference this course is to deliberate on how to make the JIC and the GEC responsive to current challenges and trends. I am asked to speak from the perspective of the bench, while the co-speaker will speak from the perspective of the bar. Without assuming that everyone in the audience knows the meaning of what the letter JIC and GEC stand for, the speaker before me has already done that. JIC stands for Judicial Inquiry Commission. This commission grew out of the Supreme Court's desire to monitor the behavior and conduct of judges and their adherence to the canons as prescribed. The Supreme Court had that obligation to make rules that guide the practice of law. And when you make rules, you should have people to monitor how the rules are being observed. So the JIC was to monitor the behavior of judges to make sure they are adhering to the canons that govern their performance. It is the JIC that hears and investigates complaints against judges brought before it to the Office of the Chief Justice or directly filed before them. But anyone who is aggrieved
by the unethical behavior of a judge, justice of the Supreme Court or magistrate. The JRC is headed by an associate justice right now. They rotate. The members are two judges, of course, of record, the president of the Liberal National Bar Association, and the chairman of the GEC, according to Canon 40. You heard the speaker before me say that. And uh, concord. That's pursuant to Canon number 40. This membership has, however, been extended by an extraordinary provision to include some civil society personalities. The work of the JIC to receive and investigate complaints against judges, including justices of the Supreme Court, the Chief Justice not exempted, and report findings with recommendations to the Supreme Court. The recommendations may include a warning, a fine, suspension, or impeachment from the judgeship depending on the nature or gravity of the violation. This assignment places the commission in a very significant position protecting the integrity of the judicial system by rooting out the bad apples and throwing out the rotten ones without fear, favor, or gain. The working tool of the GIC is a set of rules properly referred to as the judicial canons. There are 40 judicial canons. These canons are the guidelines that govern the ethical and professional behavior of judges, magistrates, and justices in the administration of justice. A violation of these canons, of any of these canons, when reported, is a ground for JIC action. On the other hand is the GEC, the Grievance and Ethics Committee, the other branch of the Supreme Court. The job of this committee is to investigate complaints alleging the unethical behavior or conduct of lawyers and report findings with recommendations to the Supreme Court. Usually, the complaint in the form of a letter is addressed to Chief Justice, who forwards it with a covering letter to the chairman of the GEC for investigation. This committee is chaired by a former associate justice of the Supreme Court. In the past, membership was restricted to lawyers. Currently, there are as many society members as lawyers totally nine persons. Both the GIC and GC do face challenges, but these challenges are not insurmountable. They only need to be addressed. One of these challenges is the lack of incentive to show up for work. As a result, investigations are often stalled or delayed. For instance, an investigation that will have ended in a week or two drags on for months due to failure to obtain a forum. In this day and age, let's be realistic. It is <laughs> I'm not looking up because I don't want to see anybody <laughs> talking to me. <laughs> 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 
in those day and age, it will be full hardy. For anyone to think that free services are available for him to gain, especially for persons who also have economic constraints. As much as one would like to serve to prove his whole patriotism and enjoy the honor that are of being a member of the GEC or JRC, believe me, patriotism and honor are not solutions to economic problems. Yeah. And so Franco should therefore rethink and find a way to encourage dedication or commitment to serve. The idea of recruiting people to serve the judiciary in such high and essential positions, free of charge, or on pro bono basis, cast doubt on on a constant perception of how important or, or serious the role the post of the GIC and the GEC are in the administration of justice. The judiciary is not a proper or a non-profit organization. The judiciary therefore does not qualify for pro bono services. <laughs> Those people that are appointed to sit and investigate for hours and hours GEC, JIC. For hours, I don't say for one hour, hours. Simply to walk from their home day after day, month after month, year after year, with no compensation is unrealistic. As a result, the people come when they can. I'm on a grievance and ethics committee. And a few times I did not come was because I didn't have transportation. <laughs> <laughs> and who will hold me responsible for not coming? <laughs> what will you be telling me? Why you didn't come to work? <laughs> Nobody. Because who is paying me to come to work? <laughs> Nobody. So they want to make those two. So, institutions viable, strong. Let's put those people on salary. If they don't perform, then you can hold them. But thank you, or sometimes don't thank you, you don't expect more. You get what you pay for. <laughs> for economic inducement to serve, there is also a need for oversight or show of interest in the work of the committee or commission. This is not a call for interference, but rather a call for, for perhaps just a simple question in the whole way as we pass by one another. How is the committee or commission doing? How can a Supreme Court help? Show of interest sometimes convey appreciation or gratitude, a structure for free services. <laughs> the speaker before me suggested this. 
We don't live together. I don't even know where she lives, and I don't think she knows where I live. But we see the same problem. She suggested that, that the judiciary should pay. Let the judiciary pay the people. Don't call people to work hours with nothing. No. Let me the pro bono for the poor people. <laughs> but not for a whole branch of government message of justice. <laughs> Another challenge. <laughs> now he he won't do what you said you were gonna do. We if you come to a juicy party. <laughs> Another challenge is the Supreme Court's slow reaction at times. Not only time but sometimes to recommendations from the GRC. No one, magistrate, judge, or justice who has been investigated and found guilty of violating the rule and or cannot should be spared serving the penalty attached. No way. This enforcement will serve as a deterrent. It will serve as a deterrent and also as encouragement to the members of the commission or committee for work done and to continue to do so because of the positive results their work produces. At this juncture, the speaker sees a need to refresh the memory of judges, the bench. on a few of the 40 canons that govern their ethical and professional conduct in their discharge of the secret tax of administering justice. The fact that some judges still fall short of their devotion to legal and professional ethics and adherence to the rule of law in the process of administering justice by engaging in some unethical activities is proof of the need for these reminders or refreshing practices now and then. The following are the few canons chosen for this review. Maybe some of you don't even read <laughs> the rules of ethics. So now and then, you should be reminded of what the rules are. So now, here we go. Judicial canon one. It says, additional qualification for appointment to the judgeship. In addition to the constitutional and statutory, yeah, and then, and lawyer who is selected for appointment to serve as judge of the court of law shall have one knowledge of the law. Don't let anybody make you judge when you know the law. <laughs> if they, they call you for that appointment, say no, I can't. Because I don't know enough. And show successfully complete the bar examination. We just did that recently, some failed, some passed. Those of you who failed, some of you are saying you want to see your papers because you don't believe you failed. Let me make it clear here. When we collect those papers, to, when we are co correcting them, those exams, we do know who is who because we give them numbers. 
that means I'm not attached. So, if you are putting your name on your paper and we correct it, maybe someone will have something against you <laughs> and say, I will fail you again. But that's not how it is. We don't know who pay, whose paper we are correcting. This gone examination period, because of serious concern we had about some people who have done that test three, four times and can pass. And there was one I was particularly concerned about. I asked the secretary, I said, have you finished correcting your paper? She said, yes. George Willey, are you finished correcting your paper? He said, yes. And the other lawyer, he said, yes. I said, OK. Madam Secretary, tell me the number for this person. Because I really wanted him to be successful this time. I have corrected all my papers. I just want to know how he did this trip. And he made it lowest. Mr. T. Justice, we have to tell us what to do about people who just get pass. <laughs> we will continue giving tests until. <laughs> well, <coughs> you see, so those of you here who think you need to see your papers, we will set a day for all of us, the, those who fail, to meet with the examiners at the Temple of Justice for, for me to show your papers. I want to tell you an example that made me laugh until I fell down on the chair. <laughs> Seriously. The Lord, the answer to a question, what should we do to improve to the perception of the public about the judiciary. He said, first of all, we all must put hands on the dick. is free to the defendant. 
Don't keep your paper before you sitting there and waiting for somebody to pay you money. Because they are in foundation of the law. The code is a last place for hope on earth for men. That is a very significant thing. The last hope on earth. So you don't sit there and play with people's liberty waiting for them to pay you money. You are being paid every month. Judges, don't do that. That's in violation of your own rules or canon. Canon number six says, judge as government paid official. The judge is a government paid official and must be paid adequately. Must be paid adequately. He holds an exalted position which prevents him from engaging in any business pursuit. Therefore, he must be provided with the necessities of life and with every means by which he will be able to perform his judicial duties effectively and speedily. The judge must be encouraged and given the incentive to live a decent and dignified life that will prevent financial and domestic worries and enable him to repel temptation which is susceptible to human life. As priests of justice, priests, as priests of justice, a judge should not be given a cause to be corrupted in the performance of a judicial duties so as to be justified for disciplinary, disciplinary action taken against him if found deficient in those qualities. Pay the judges. Pay the judges. Canon number eight is talking about public interest. Courts exist to promote justice, to serve the public interest. There is a ministry of justice which they must do with speed and care. Every judge should at all times be alert in his ruling and in the conduct of the business of the court so, as, so far as he can. Don't hear a case, suspend your ruling, and go on forever, not pay any attention to it. The people are anxious. They want to know the outcome of the hearing. Don't put it down, say ruling reserve, and you just forget about it. No. 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 There is a constitutional obligation. Judicial canon number nine. It is a duty of all judges in the republic to uphold and support the constitution and the laws of the land. In so doing, they, as custodian of the constitution, should fearlessly observe and apply for the matter of rights and guarantees. If the courts don't do this for the people of the country to uphold rights, fundamental rights and guarantees, then we have failed them. <laughs> Essential conduct of a judge. A judge should be temperate, attentive, impartial, and since he is to administer the law, interpret it and apply it to the facts, he should be studious of the principles and diligent in endeavoring to ascertain the facts 
<coughs> the facts are very important to making a decision. If the judge is not even patient or not attentive, now, not studious enough to know what the facts are in the law to apply. You are going to be making a whole lot of mistakes. We used to hear, well, if I, if I make a mistake, the Supreme Court will correct it. Mm -hmm. But the Supreme Court got a way of correcting those errors. When you are sitting there, you hear the Supreme Court telling you that you were stupid to have ruled this way, or that you did it for some reward. You don't feel good. You shouldn't feel good. So judges, mind that. Do not say the Supreme Court will correct it. As I said, the Supreme Court can sometimes be brutal in correcting your errors. Especially errors you, if you are a lawyer, should not be making. Constitutional obligation cannot lie. Hmm? <laughs> Gives and favors. A judge should not accept any present or favor for litigants or for lawyers practicing before him or before them or from others whose interests are likely to be submitted to them for judgment. If you have a case, judge, and one Saturday you see one of the lawyers in that case come to your house not even the good of, to your house. How are you, your owner, bowing down that like he almost wants us to go? <laughs> he has brought a gift. Was it your birthday? <laughs> no. You should tell that lawyer, look, take your envelope and get out of my yard. Be strong enough to tell me that. Because you know what? As soon as you receive it, he's going to tell somebody or other people that he's coming from bribing you. That's what he will do. He will go tell people that he bribed you. So tell him to carry I will tell you an incident that happened when I was on a bench. We made a made a decision because I was uh, I was in Chimba, I made a decision. A lawyer went to my house, one of the lawyers. He put on someone a jeans hat. He put on short dresses and t-shirt. He went to my house. So I came down to the meeting. He said, Justice, I beg you. I said, wait, before you beg me, why are you appearing before me dressed like this? I said, this is a criminal appearance. <laughs> If you will go by your decision, our covenant will be broke. So we beg you. We beg you. Don't let this happen. I say let. Am I the one letting it happen? No, I'm not letting anything happen. You want a Supreme Court, you want a justice in Jimba to take your issues you are presenting, issues that you try in court. If you don't win, then you take appeal to the Supreme Court. You want me sitting in chamber to make that decision? He said, we beg you. Because it will go to a trial court, our client will spend too much money, which they don't have. I said, oh, OK. I said, I can't do it. He said, OK, I brought something for you. I say, what is it, money? <laughs> yeah, justice. I say, were you in the Supreme Court when I said, any lawyer who want to bribe me must put the money in a suitcase? <laughs> Is this 
money in this envelope, the one that will take care of my old age and they fire me from this place for taking bribe. I said, take your envelope and go. He started going, I will leave it right here. I want you to I will leave it right here. He started going, I said, come back. I said, you leave this envelope here. You and the envelope will sleep in jail tonight. He grabbed it and went. He grabbed it and went. Don't do that. Don't do that. I don't care how. I don't care how the temptation is. Do not yield to it. They call you all priests of justice. You are God on earth. If you rule wrongly, yeah, you will be sentenced. Except like you don't believe in God. <laughs> you believe in uh, uh, judgment day. So if you do, then you are clear. But if you believe in going to hell and going to heaven, that money you are taking now to give somebody's right to somebody else, Promptness, promptness. Article 15. A judge should be prompt in the performance of judicial duties, recognizing that the time of litigants, jurors, and lawyers is of value. A habitual lack of punctuality on his part justifies dissatisfaction in his administration of the business of the court. You know, taking bribe is sometimes the reason why judges have difficulty to write the opinion. When you know the law is on that side, then the people on the other side come and bribe you and you accept it. How do you say that to write that opinion? It takes long for you to write that opinion. <laughs> that's it, that's it. That's something for you to say. Because you have tied your hands and your brain. Each time you sit down to write, <laughs> you say, oh Lord, how can I change this wrong to right and right to wrong? So, be prompt when you hear a case, finish it and go to the next case. You reserve ruling maybe for one or two days, but not forever. You can, you don't know. Independence. Canon 16. A judge should not be swayed away by partisan, partisan demands, public clamor, or consideration of personal popularity or notoriety, nor be apprehensive of unjust criticism. Don't mind what they say. Do the right thing. Don't worry about everybody accepting you. Do your work. Posterity will honor you. If today's people do honor you, posterity will honor you. Because they will read those opinions. They will read those judgments, those decisions. Ex parte application. A judge should discourage ex parte hearing or applications for injunction and receiverships where the other may work detriment to absent parties. He should act upon ex parte application only where the necessity for quick action is clearly shown. 
If this be said, then he should endeavor to counteract the effect of the absence of opposing counsel by a scrupulous cross-examination as to the facts and the principles of law on which the application is based. You have a case before you. There are two sides in that case. Do not take any action from what one side has come to tell you. You have to hear the other side too. If you take action because of what one side presented to you, without notice to the other side, you are violating the rule. Except in a case where it is very urgent. Urgent, that something be done. Then you go to court quick. Say, Judge, here is here are the facts I have. If you don't stop these people now, they will do this. And that will be very serious matter. Granting relief only when satisfied that the laws permit it and the emergency demands it. That's the only way a judge, any judge, should take any ex parte action in a case that has two sides. He should remember that an injunction is a limitation upon the freedom of action of defendant and should not be granted lightly or in advisory. <coughs> One applying for relief must sustain the burden of showing clearly its necessity and its burden is increased in the absence of a party whose freedom of action is sought to be restrained, even though only temporarily. Politics cannot tell the survey. While a judge is entitled to entertain his personal view of political questions, and while not required to surrender his right or opinion as a citizen, it is inevitable that suspicions of being warped by political bias will attach to a judge who becomes an active member of a political party and promote, promoter of his interests. Another, especially those of our judges of the highest schools who by constitutional command are empowered to review and determine electoral issues under the multi-party system introduced by the 1986 Constitution. Candidates for political office should neither accept or retain a place on any party committee or as a party leader or generally engage in any party activities. I said cannot tell the survey. And I'm reading the cannot. I didn't say this. This is not me talking. I'm reading the cannot to you. And I hope you all will listen. Partisan politics, judges should avoid. A judge should not appear at political meetings and in the case of a candidate for political office, nor should he permit his wife or her husband to give political teas. <laughs> your wife, your husband is running, so uh, you, you invite people, politicians, to your house for tea. No, they say you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that because you are not supposed to be showing who you are supporting. Nobody will see your ballot. 
but don't show that you are supporting this party because that would be embarrassing to you. The law says you will not do that. Article 77 to 84 of the Liberal Constitution confer on the Supreme Court of Liberia the power and finally determine to review and finally determine electoral issues and disputes under the multi-party system. Such issues as protest membership, protest against membership in the political parties, denial of registration of political parties, elections, contests, abuse from violation of election law, etc. It should therefore be embarrassing to the justice of the Supreme Court, Honorable Supreme Court, upon a review and determination of issues involving political parties if they are members of any political party. It is therefore important that while a justice of the Supreme Court of Liberia is entitled to entertain his personal view of political matters and why he is not required by statute laws to surrender his right as citizen, it will, however, be in his best interest and a public good that upon his appointment to that branch of honor, even as a judge, magistrate, or justice of the peace, that he publicly resign his membership or affiliation with political parties. That he was a member of prior to ascending the bench. Judicial cannot tell it the summary of judicial obligation. In every particular case, a judge's conduct should always be about re reproach. The judge's conduct should always be about reproach. He should be conscientious, studious, thorough, courteous, patient, punctual, just. Just, a just, just, impartial, fearless of public clamor, regardless of public praise, and indifferent to private political or partisan influence. He should administer justice according to law and deal with his appointment as a public trust. He should not allow another affair or his private interest to interfere with the prompt and proper performance of his judicial duties, nor should he administer the office for the purpose of advancing his personal ambitions or increasing his popularity. Don't be involved in politics. Don't. Don't decide case on public or, or political issues on the basis of your affiliation. You should not even be affiliated. You can vote. But don't let anybody out there know that you are for them. Because when the matter comes before you, how are you going to do? You go back to that person, I was for you, but the other people, they didn't agree. As earlier indicated, a justice or judge who violates the cannot face penalties. We, just, we chose to discuss some, not all of the cannot, because we do not believe the chosen ones to be germane to the theme of this conference and especially to the topic assigned to the speaker. 
Hopefully, the job was done. Mr. Chief Justice, and Honorable Associate Justice, all protocol observed previously, I beg your indulgence to submit a public recommendation, suggestions, and comments to form part of the discussion by the Conference Resolution Committee. I hope you have a Conference Resolution Committee. Is there? Okay. The roles of this GECLA GRC are quite job to securing and maintaining the good image and reputation of the judiciary of Liberia. Those who are appointed in these two entities should be paid for their valuable services by their counterparts in the executive branch. This suggestion, if welcomed by the Supreme Court, can be made a line line item in the judicial budget after successfully presenting and winning the argument during the annual national budget hearing. Pay the people that you can hold them for not working. The Supreme Court should reduce the number of civil society personnel on the GCMGRD to two persons each to serve only as observers during the investigation in the interest of transparency. They can sit there and observe how the investigation is going. They are out there and be observers. The Supreme Court should reduce the number of mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those who investigate, investigate the lawyers of judges and hear us the rules of canon need themselves be knowledgeable and well informed about the rules. It is a fact that every profession has its own rules of ethics. We should not call on a medical doctor to sit in judgment for an engineer's breach of engineering ethics. The Chief Justice, in consultation with the Associate Justices, should figure out how to monitor the work of the monitors. You have two groups of monitors, GEC, JIC. Monitor their work. How they are faring what problems or obstacles they may have, that's all. I heard the speaker before me say, the GEC and JIC have no term of reference. I beg to differ. They do. They have. They have terms of reference. They are charged with responsibility of investigating the lawyers and judges that are accused and the guideline for the investigation and the rules governing lawyers and the rules governing women as are found in the rules and the canons. When we investigate people on the GEC, if someone, someone says to the lawyer, this is so, 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 we look to the kennels to see what rules this person has violated. So we have that. But I want to inform you of that. There is a project that was heading to write a handbook. She was saying, even though, even though, yeah, 
procedure, everything. So that hair book is waiting for maybe four or like this. You all can have, if you get to have access to it, you go through it, whatever contribution you can make. We add it to it, we we'll come up with that. But for now, we are going by the, the rules and canons of the Supreme Court that govern these people. They investigate, they write a report with recommendations to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court will take the recommendation, like for example, it GEC, if they say a suspension, or in some cases, fine, or strong warning. The Supreme Court can suggest which one to take based on the findings. And that has been happening. That how we have been able to suspend lawyers for three years, two years. That's how we have been able to suspend a judge for one year. We have not investigated an associate justice or chief justice. We have not. And I was and that is my question. Why have we not? <laughs> Why have we not? And the answer is nobody has complained. Nobody has complained. But instead, somebody who had a complaint took it to the other branch of government. When the JIC was sitting right there, it's right there. We could have had the benefit of that investigation to know whether that associate justice that was impeached faced the JIC. But he was never brought before the JIC. For 19 years, he was sitting there and nobody said anything until we changed government, then we decided to impeach him on things he did in the past. Why was he not brought by that person? Why that person didn't bring the complaint to Justice, Chief Justice Johnny Lewis? Johnny Lewis left because Justice Hoboke. Why did that person not bring the complaint? The only brought complaint maybe 19 years after, and that was that complaint that was looked into that led to impeachment. So they skipped the judicial inquiry. Why? That's why I want to know. <laughs> so when are we going to have an associate justice question? Why will somebody bring a complaint to the JIC involving the Supreme Court for the Chief Justice and two other justices to preside? You see, we need to have a case. <laughs> Can set a precedent. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> the Supreme Court, the judiciary, seriously, is where people go for redress when they feel violated. The Supreme Court should do all it can to prevent a repeat of the public violence displayed recently at the doorstep of the Temple of Justice. 
that grew out of the frustration employees experienced when salaries already very low were cut and not paid on time. The Supreme Court must exert all efforts to protect the interests of judicial employees, especially their financial well-being. The Supreme Court could be the most powerful force in the government. But only if the Supreme Court exerts its power and not subjugate itself to the executive or legislative branches by settling down <laughs> setting down for a disproportionate subsidy from the national budget, which is by all accounts very much inadequate to fund the programs of the judiciary. I therefore suggest that the Chief Justice, head of the judiciary, should raise salaries in the next budget. You see, we did that done. <laughs> especially the salaries of all employees who are making less than $200, and there are many such employees in the judiciary. <laughs> and we call them corrupt. No corrupt people there, no, uh, uh, you send those people to sell papers, they, they go and take money and so on. Yes, because they are not making anything to sustain them. We do not, people don't know, but it's true. All human beings have the same needs. The basic needs, food, medicine, shelter, everything. Even the person is living in a child. We all need those things. And I was talking about these people who take these little things in general, we call them corrupt. Those are the people they talk to. They are all corrupt. They are not corrupt intentionally. <coughs> they are hustlers, in fact. <laughs> people struggling to survive. The corrupt ones, we want to know who the corrupt ones are. Let us know the people down here. They are now doing the same thing as the other. Those in this country who are making thousands and yet get engaged in taking bribe or converting public policy. Those are the people we should be looking at because they the one got our economy in a bad situation. Not those little people who walk us outside and then for little things. The Supreme Court should stand clear of all and any political influences or pressures when deciding matters of political nature. Example, contested election matters. Not to make winners losers and losers winners. We must remember always that President Doe was tortured to death for rigging an election, an event that led to war leading to not only loss of life and property, but the displacement of citizens internally and externally. The Supreme Court says what the law is. And when the Supreme Court says what the law is, no man, however powerful, can change it. That is why the Supreme Court, acting like God on earth, must say truthfully 
what they believe the law to be without fear, favor, or personal reward. The Supreme Court must, after reviewing the findings and recommendations of the IC and taking a position, example, suspension or disbarment in the case of lawyers, or suspension or binding a judge over to legislature for impeachment, the court must be vigilant, decisive, to enforce the punishment for a violation without any second thought or change of mind that is contrary to fairness and justice. Finally, too long I have kept silent when I should have spoken. I am seizing this moment with the permission of the organizing committee of this forum to speak on issues of national importance. If anybody come to my house, tonight. <laughs> to, get, to get yourself going to hell. Because I am already old. And on my way, then you come there to come beat me to death. So it will not be good for you here or oh, it's a pretty curse on it. <laughs> so I stand before this audience to make an appeal to the government of Liberia, political party leaders and their partisans, the Liberian electorate, fellow citizens. Let us together try to keep the peace. We can keep the peace when we let justice ring like a bell for all to hear from Maryland to Kima. Yeah. We can let justice ring when we let the voters choose the people of their choice. Yeah. When we stand clear of actions or expressions suggestive of the one party system, on that wish, sister, librarians suffered. Some were jailed for years, and some even were killed in efforts to change from that system. Maybe some of you know it was not an easy thing changing from that system, one party system, to what you have now. Let librarians honor those change makers by abiding and upholding the tenets of democracy. You know those days when we had a one party system? Like that was a democracy. But what democracy was there? But well, you couldn't say anything. The things I hear, the people talking, I say, hey, no. We wish we could have said those things when we were young. We couldn't. Because the freedom to speech was, yes, good, open to all. So no, you don't criticize the government. <laughs> all the good things you want to say about the government, fine, you are allowed to. But you miss and say anything that the government they didn't like. You find yourself going to Belayala or post -tacket. You want to go back to that? No. People die to give you what you have. I was threatened. I who had to register our first political party in this country. I was threatened on two sides. Those who didn't want that to happen and those who wanted it to happen. The Minister of Defense had to send soldiers to guide my house. And I told him, thank you, but go and I do live together. So let the soldiers go. I'm a fair of God. If you don't register a party, we'll burn your house. Kill your husband, kill yourself, all your children. If you register a party, and I have a dress you. <laughs> and 
the day I registered a party in this country, the Supreme Court yard was full of people from New Town all the way to wherever. Rejoicing. The people were rejoicing. The people were rejoicing. <laughs> hmm? So, the tenets of democracy, freedom of speech, voting rights, choice of political affiliation, right to opinion, right to protest, freedom to choose which religion you want to belong to. Then Nigeria protect the multi-party system, allowing opposing views, especially in matters of national interest. And while we are doing all the effort, let us mind our natural resources. Bearing in mind that they are not for us, the present generation alone. Let us preserve something for future generations. The King, King John woman, so much go came from there and left. You go there, from here there, the road is so bad. They couldn't even fix the road. They have turned it over to another group to come and get a rest of the group and go. Just how Bombing Hills, I don't own the best at the time on the world map. It was all docked up and taken over the road and they didn't even fix the road and do the Bombing Hills. Well, it's my, uh, the country is too small, but beautiful and rich. Well, let's protect our natural resources. I hope some government officials are here who are not members of the judiciary to take that message from me that I am arguing or urging Liberians to mind the Liberian resources. We might not give all to investors to carry it and we get nothing to show. They said it goes. Please. Now. Yeah. And last but not the least. Let us fight Liberia's number one enemy. We know what Liberia's number one enemy is, right? Corruption. Eh? Yes. What? Corruption. That has kept this beautiful and bountiful little country below the poverty line. While the majority of the people are hungry, sick, and ignorant. Let us love Liberia but do all we can to implement the pro pro agenda. Let us fight corruption honestly and passionately to free our country from poverty disease, ignorance, and discord. Remember always that Liberia is the only place we can call home, our motherland. Few questions to the panelists. No, no.
No question. No question. And all that, that one for the people in Peru is not for us. How do we solve our problem here? So we have the National Judicial Conference to try to come up with uh, things that will improve the judiciary. We have, we can reach out to others outside of Monrovia who can afford to come here to bring their complaints. As a stun in Ghana, in Nigeria and in Sierra Leone. What the Supreme Court has done is they have created what they call a judicial council. And if we have judicial council in all the counties, the judicial council will be able to review and hear complaints, do an investigation, and send that submission to the Supreme Court for implementation. If we start to create a judicial council, will be able to be successful in the judiciary and the bar working together will make it better. There is no need for a judicial council to do that. If we read the canons, there is provision for uh, the establishment of the JRC and the GEC in the counties. You get need to put the mechanism in the place. There is no need to establish a judicial council to do that work. We will listen to the recommendations that you people have made, and from here, we we'll try to be robust in trying to create the establishment of these bodies in the counties. That's what we do. Does not punish any lawyer 
who maybe have been found guilty for some uh, ethical breaches, even uh, that one can also you know, ask a party who going to complain to take them out of court or represent a party. So it looks like that the, the committee of the bar is completely, I mean, has, is, 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 it is all toothless. Because if you cannot, if you can investigate lawyer but cannot take any measure, then why not we dissolve that liberty community bar and submit them to the judiciary, the, 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 the great community set up by the Supreme Court? Thank you. Well, as I said, based on the documentation, is that the Grievance and Ethics Committee cannot tell you to refund the money or whatever. But the bar Grievance and Ethics Committee, all they can do is to suspend somebody as a member of the bar. And in my recommendation, I'm saying you have the GAC at the judiciary, you have the GEC at the bar. And the judiciary and the bar are to work together not at extreme arm length. And so what I'm saying is, what I'm suggesting is, instead of having two judiciary inquiry commissions that will do the same thing, investigate the lawyer, let's say a bar does an investigation. They send it to the chief justice, the chief justice, we have to send it to the judiciary inquiry commission of the judiciary, investigate and recommend. Why should we have two when the bar and the judiciary should be working as one? We are, I'm, re we are, I'm recommending, let's have one previous ethics committee and the bar be a part, because the bar is a part of the judiciary previous ethics committee. Do we need another one at the bar? I said no. I'm saying let's have one, the bar be represented, the associate justices be represented, and the lawyers be investigated for the immoral contacts, and we do it, and then it's the recommendation is sent to the Supreme Court for implementation. You know, is that the bar say I will suspend? And then you say attorney or you say counselor. Can we have one and work together as a bar and as a judiciary so that we can be seen in the public eyes of the public that we are implementing the law? And that is what I'm recommending. Thank you, Your Honor. The way things are set up now. GDC is to investigate lawyers. Lawyers. The JIC to investigate complaint against judges. And I don't see I don't see any conflict or anything. Of course, you are suggesting that we should have one body to do. No. I think this setup is okay. We only need to stop the cheapness. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we can have people to be obligated dedicated to come to work, that's all. But I don't think we should have the lawyers and the judges investigated because they don't have the same. Yes? Yes. But that's all we have. Oh, 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 you're talking about them. Oh, okay. Now, uh, not too long ago, that bar association at the LNBA LNA, investigated and <laughs> made pronouncements on a lawyer. And I was wondering, Chief Justice, how? How do we do this? I know the law is or policy that judicial uh, grievance and ethics committee should be established in notice. Okay. They didn't say GIC should be established in the counties. 
The JIC is in Monrovia with the Supreme Court and a lawyer and a judge who is far wanting to bring a good thing there. But that on a grill and ethics committee in the LMBA, plus the one in the judiciary, I think there is a problem there. Who does what? That was not the issue myself been thinking about. Because we were trying the man for all the different things. You know who I'm talking about. They started over there. They started at the LMPA. From LMPA, we went to the press. We found Rishim, the Supreme Court. <laughs> then, after that, we turned back into the Supreme Court. And they called me to go there as one of the lawyers. I said, no, I can't come. Because the work, the investigation, at the LMPA, you invited me. I came there and made opinions. How can I come when you come to the other GEC that I'm part of, to look at the, which I'm going to be on? I said, I can't, so I didn't come. Yes? Mm -hmm. Oh, really? I didn't know. Oh, thank you for telling me because I didn't know. Okay, thank you. Uh, considering the time, because we have to return here tomorrow early in the morning to continue with this process. So I beg you that we stop this question at this point so that we can permit our presenter to leave and, and we discharge them from, from answering any question for now and consider the a day. But just before we close on, I got a note where during lunch, someone mislaid a phone. And the phone number is 0778441226. Anyone, anyone who by luck came across this phone can pass it by the uh, moderator desk so that we can be able to trace the owner or the owner can be able to pick it up. Anyone who might have seen phone not belonging to them, please be honorable enough to have it delivered to the moderator desk. Thank you very much. Please, um, again, can we give a round of applause to our last speakers for today and our moderators. As the Moderator said, please, before you leave, um, we would just like to remind all of us that this is a judicial conference and the Supreme Court will want us to know that this is a workshop of all of us, especially practitioners in the law. So our comportment is highly, highly required. We still have the Chief Justice and the Justices seated, and the conference has not come to a close today, and we have lawyers and other practitioners leaving the hall. As we said earlier, if you haven't gotten the presentations, some will be available after you see them at the front entrance or tomorrow morning. We'd like to acknowledge those who are following the conference online. We've noted your comments. We want to say thanks uh, to uh, you, Mr. Jiri Molamberg Maulu, and James Ton Tolo. You wanted to know whether a Liberian holding an LLB from a foreign country can sit the bar exam. Uh, yes, you can. We'd like to say thanks for your comments. Odell Sonny, we'd like to say thanks for your comments, uh, Councillor Vivian Chiru, and also Lincoln Coco. those of you who are also following online via our live stream of the conference. At this time, we would like to invite 
Reverend Cisco Brown, who will give us our benediction, and then we will sing the national anthem and call it a day.